Most of us that are building speakers have been building speakers for a while and use all kinds of budget amplifiers. And one of those amplifiers that's very famous is the Lapai 2020. That just revolutionized really the cheap amplifier class D market. Well, Lapai's back at it again and they maybe revolutionized the 2.1 plate amplifier market. Let's go ahead and take a look at this and I wanna see what you guys think about this. It's a really cool product. Alright guys, like I said, this is a Lopai little plate amplifier. It is very, very small. Now it is a 2.1, meaning that it powers both uh, two speakers and a subwoofer. And that's where this really, really separates itself, especially for its size. It's very, very small. And there's a lot of really cool applications that you can have with this. But let's go ahead and talk a little bit about what it is and maybe what it isn't so that you have a good idea of whether or not you're even interested in it. This is a plate amplifier, meaning that the only input is this line input on the back. It's not Bluetooth, it's nothing else, it's just this. Now you can add a Bluetooth adapter to it, but it only has that input. It does also have an RCA output. Now if you're concerned about you know these two outputs, maybe you don't want to use it, there's a switch here that switches between a 2.1 and a 0.1 output. And there's also, of course, a power switch. You're going to notice that there's a DC power adapter does not come with a power adapter. If you want one, you're gonna to have to get one. Although Parts Express does sell a kit that now supplies an adapter with it as well. There are three potentiometers. Each one is labeled with what it does. One sub volume, one's a crossover frequency, which crosses over your subwoofer. And the last is the speaker volume. There's a couple of reasons why I think that this might be something that would really interest you if you're getting ready to do a project. The first thing is everyone always asks, is there a high pass filter on the speakers? And the answer is always no. I mean, I, I don't know very many of these 2.1 boards that have a high pass filter at all. But this one does. Starts at 100 hertz, is six decibels per octave. The fact that it's there is really, really nice because we don't have that in almost any amplifier board that I can really think of. There isn't one. And, and having a plate amplifier is even better. Now, most people are gonna look at this and say, well, there's limitations. You can only use this in like a standalone project, like a 2.1 board project. That's where you'd be wrong. And that's the other thing that really excites me about this. If we flip this over and we take a look at the circuit board itself, you're gonna notice that not only are all the solder points able to be soldered on, but they're clearly labeled as to what they do. So you have, of course, your line in, your power, all of them are labeled left and right. So if you wanted to make this portable, you easily could by soldering right onto the power ports or even putting the speakers, wiring them internally instead of externally. That's really neat because that means that this particular amplifier has multi-functions. So not only can you use it in like a little 2.1 desktop or living room setup, but you can also use it in like a portable system if you want to as well. Now this is a 2.1 and it is powered by two chips. Now the chips are the exact same chip and if you read it, it is the TPA3118. This one is not bridged and so it powers the left and the right terminals and this one is bridged and it just powers the subwoofer. So what does that mean? That means that you're gonna get double the power to the subwoofer of whatever you're supplying. That doesn't sound right, so let me explain what I mean by that. If you give it 100 watts of power, 50 of those watts are going to go to the subwoofer. The other 50 watts are gonna to go to the satellites. However, that wattage is going to be split into two or divided between the left and the right speaker. And it doesn't matter if you only have one speaker hooked up, you're still only gonna get the 25 watts to each one of those speakers. While the subwoofer will be, of course, getting the 50 watts. Now this particular amplifier maxes out at 120 watts. You should be able to get 30 watts to each one of your bookshelf speakers and 60 watts to the subwoofer. So where do I see this really playing out? And I see this a lot in a voxel subwoofer. A lot of you guys like to build the voxel sub. I actually have a redesign coming out soon. I'll have a video on that, which will feature a slot port for those of you who are interested. But this would fit perfectly on the backside of something like a voxel 
and you would never see it. And it could power two other speakers. So that would be great for like a 2.1 desktop setup, or maybe even good for something like a sound bar or a small music station, or maybe even a small living room setup for some of you guys. Another place where I see this is the portable field. A lot of people want to do 2.1s, but there's not a lot of great 2.1 boards out there. In fact, some of them are either noisy or like we've mentioned earlier, there's not that high pass built in to really protect the smaller speakers that you might have hooked up to it. That's where this comes into play. So I do see that people could use this as a portable unit, and I hope that people do. Now I have a couple ideas for a project that I might be doing with it. I should mention, I have tested this out. It does work really well. I'm not gonna be showing it in this video because I will be building something with it. And I wanna hear what you guys think I should build with it. I have a couple ideas. Let me go ahead and run them by you. First is of course a sound bar. I already mentioned it earlier. I think you could run a sound bar with this and even hook it up so that it has remote control. So if you're interested in seeing that, let me know. I'll go ahead and maybe build one of those. If you're not interested in that, I also have thought about a small desktop setup. Now that small desktop setup would be something that would the speakers would latch onto the subwoofer and we could take to something like a LAN party or a friend's house. Uh, and last but not least, I could make a small little 2.1 setup that could either be hooked up to your computer or your television. It would not work necessarily with remote control. However, if you want it to, let me know and I will consider making it also remote control as well. All right, guys, if you have any questions, any comments, any concerns, leave them in the description below. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe so that you get all the video updates. And don't forget to ring the bell. That's the one that tells you when a new video comes out. Guys, I really appreciate the support. I love you watching the videos. Thank you everyone for doing that. I'll see you next time.